You've probably heard of the term validity in terms of assessment and testing. This is an important idea or concept to have it a good idea of when you go into your NCE, CPCE, or whatever counseling exam you're going to be taking. This video is going to briefly cover what validity is, as well as some different forms of validity that there are. So make sure that you stay tuned for the whole video so that you don't miss anything. My name is Keegan. I recently completed my master's degree in counseling. I'm making this video along with the other videos on my channel to help you prepare for the NCE, CPCE, or whatever counseling exam it is that you might be taking. These exams can be a lot to prepare for, and it can be helpful to have different forms of the content, whether it be reading it, listening to it, watching it in a video to help you understand it and help it stick in your mind in different ways. Especially with something like validity that is most likely going to be on your exam in some way, shape, or form, that's one that you're probably really gonna to wanna to have a good idea of. As a quick refresher into what validity is, validity is whether a test is actually measuring what it's supposed to be measuring. So if you have an IQ test that measures eyesight, since those two things are pretty different, that test is probably not valid at all. However, if you have an IQ test that actually shows what level of IQ someone may have, that would then be most likely a very valid IQ assessment. Remember that experts consider validity to be one of the most important, if not the most important part of an assessment, which makes complete sense because if a test is not measuring what it's supposed to, then what's the purpose of that test anyway, right? And also remember that a valid test is always reliable. So if you don't know what reliability is, make sure that you check out my channel because there are other videos on here that do explain what reliability is. So we talked about what validity is as a general concept, that it's actually measuring what it's supposed to measure. However, there are actually five other types of validity that we can talk about or more specific ways that we can talk about validity might be a better way of saying that. The first is content validity, which is sometimes called logical or rational validity. So you may see those terms for this instead. When we talk about content validity, we're talking about whether the assessment measures the full range of what it's trying to measure. IQ assessments are a good example of this because if an IQ assessment only measures somebody's vocabulary or only measures their mathematical ability, that would then be a, an assessment of IQ that doesn't really have good content validity. However, if the IQ assessment measures reasoning, vocabulary, mathematics, science, and all these different pieces, then we're going to be having an IQ assessment that has much better content validity. Second, some assessments need to measure more theoretical concepts that we talk about in the field of psychology or counseling. And in this case, we're going to be looking for assessments that have good construct validity. Examples of construct validity may be things like IQ, where there's many different pieces, not just one thing that makes up IQ, or self-esteem, or leadership potential. These are all more theoretical constructs because they're not easy to define. There's many different parts to things like IQ or self-esteem, rather than just one thing alone that needs to be measured. When you think of construct validity, remember that that assessment is most likely measuring something that's not easily observable. It's more abstract and has many of those different pieces like we talked about. The third form of validity would be concurrent validity. With concurrent validity, this is taking an assessment and comparing it to other similar assessments in that same area. So if we have a new IQ test that we just developed and we're comparing it to a well-established IQ assessment that's been shown to be valid and reliable, and we look at our scores and they're very different than the old IQ test scores, that would mean that our IQ test probably does not have very high concurrent validity. The concurrent validity of our new assessment, since it's scoring differently than the old IQ test, is probably pretty low. Therefore, we'd wanna look at our new assessment of IQ because it's maybe not measuring IQ in the sense that we want it to or in the way that we think it is. Fourth, we have predictive validity, which is sometimes called empirical validity. The name of predictive validity kind of gives it away, but just in case, it's referring to an assessment's ability to measure future behavior. As a little bonus, you might actually see concurrent validity and predictive validity lumped together into a term called criterion validity. We're about to get into our last form of validity, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please help me out by giving it a like or subscribing to the channel. Finally, we have consequential validity. Now this is a form of validity that is less common or not as often talked about. What concurrent validity is doing is it's trying to consider or measure the social implications of an assessment. For an example of consequential validity, if we think about standardized tests, what we would do is try to look at the pros and the cons of that standardized assessment. 
When we think about the positive sides of standardized tests, they may be a way of motivating students or maybe a way of guaranteeing or encouraging specific content to be covered in classes. However, on the negative side of standardized assessments, students may end up being taught how to take tests rather than really focusing on the material or the content that the class is hoping to cover. Additionally, standardized tests can influence how funding is distributed, and as a result, the funding may not be distributed in the best ways. So when we consider those positive and negative sides of standardized tests, that's what consequential validity is trying to do, is trying to look at the social implications of what that test is doing and how the pros and the cons can affect the outcome. I hope you found this video on validity helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.